All right, we're going to be working on updating the day two convective outlook for the United States. Um, I'm going to pull that up over here right now to kind of talk about our areas of concern for the day two period. Um, looking this up on this monitor over here. We'll be our SPC bounds of the outlook. As you can see over here, um, we're inheriting a slight risk area along the Texas coast into southwest Louisiana. Where we have the influence of Hurricane Harvey that will be making landfall, as you can see from the Hurricane Center map over here, within the next um, a couple of days. We'll bring up a track map for that very shortly, and it will be accompanied by a uh, um, some pretty substantial tornado risk um, as we head into the day two period. Um, looking right now at uh, surface analysis right now, you can see over here we have Hurricane Harvey that's off the lower Texas coast right now. We're typically monitoring the northeast quadrant of the system, then extending into a bit into the northwest quadrant slightly, and then about halfway into the southeast quadrant for greater tornado risk. That's where we have an overlap of buoyancy and sufficiently strong vertical wind shear as that system impacts relatively high or approaches relatively higher pressures over the mainland U.S., enhancing the low-level shear effectively with a stronger pressure gradient being focused on the north side of the system. High theta E air wraps around the eastern semicircle of that system, which favors that northeastern quadrant that extends a bit into the uh, northwest and the southeast quadrants as well. Now, this is the latest outlook from the uh, or advisory from the National Hurricane Center showing the track of Harvey going northwestward. Uh, we're going to be issuing the forecast starting at 12Z on Saturday. By about 12Z on Saturday, the Hurricane Center indicates the system having made landfall, so within the next couple of days, specifically over the uh, middle Texas coast vicinity. I'm um, here to kind of identify the northeast quadrants surrounding northwest and into the southeast quadrants that pretty much favors this area. But one thing to consider is that we have very expansive wind fields with Harvey. Minimum central pressure is quite low. We're going to be dealing with a major hurricane um, as projected by the Hurricane Center. And so it's going to be an expansive area with these wind radii providing sufficient shear um, for, for tornadoes. Question is going to be buoyancy and kind of looking at some of these observations here over the Gulf of Mexico right now. I mean, we have very rich moisture. Dew points in the upper 70s, even have an 80 degree dew point here observed at buoy 42001 out there in the middle Gulf. And so given the strength of the wind field around the system, some of that richer moisture can be brought in you know, pretty substantially. One other consideration going into the day two period there's a lot of dry air hanging out in the mid-levels. This is a mid-level lower vapor imagery over northern um, Mexico, Sierra Madre Orientals into the western Gulf of Mexico. There will be some potential as the system moves inland and then starts to eventually weaken for that dry air on the day two period to come in on shore. Just looking at observations right now, it's going to be a little while before that occurs as the system is largely gener generating its own cyclonic flow through a deep layer separated from you know, any more substantial steering layer winds is only going to gradually drift inland, but eventually some of this dry air may be able to wrap around the system as the system has pretty much generated its own separate block of cyclonic flow as the drier air comes around the eastern semicircle, eventually maybe even to the northeastern semicircle of the system. We may be able to have enough destabilization through the dry air intrusion aloft that is going to be responsible for supporting some cloud breaks between individual rain bands. Low level destabilization could occur with pockets of insulation amidst the strong vertical shear and that would, could be an issue for the day two in enhancing the tornado risk along the Texas coast. This is an interesting outlook because we have both a tropical component over here um, as well as more of a mid-latitude component. Kind of looking large scale wise, there's certainly a lot of convective processing that's occurring with our tropical cyclone right now. Um, but regardless, we're going to have leftover moisture. I refer to this as we refer to this as uh, recycled moisture that's going to continuously be drawn northward by the return flow pattern on the western rim of this broader anticyclone. We do have decent moisture all the way up through the northern um, high plains over here. Sometimes perturbations in northwesterly flow can enhance the convective threat because in this time of the year we don't have any really strong frontal surges to really scour all the moisture out. And so, you know, with some surface uh, return flow occurring in the western rim of the anticyclone. Even if we are technically post-frontal, um, we're able to, the fronts aren't particularly strong and we can bring some of that moisture back to the north, e back to the north, east of whatever lee trough materializes over the high plains. We have evidence of a lee trough 
that extends all the way through the high plains, typical with westerly flow aloft in the mid-levels. Um, one disturbance that's convectively enhanced across parts of the middle Missouri Valley region, and then adif additional perturbations embedded within cyclonic flow aloft um, across parts of the northern U.S. And so um, background westerly flow is descending in the east slopes of the uh, Rocky Mountain front range over the high plains, and that is encouraging stretching of the column and a boost in vertical vorticity, adiabatic warming over the high plains region, and encouragement of, of the lead trough across the high plains. And so we'll mark that over here. So it kind of becomes increasingly diffuse with southward extent as we get into that weakness in the mid-level flow, some call evidence in the southeast um, U.S. kind of removed from the belt of westerly as lofty 